Andrew Bridgen has walked out of Lawrence Fox's reclaim party, so Lawrence Fox now has no MPs in his party and apparently has had a difference of opinion with Andrew Bridgen, which I don't suppose is that difficult to um, imagine. And uh, he says he's been standing up for those who have been injured by vaccines and exposing the worrying cover-up of trends in excess death or deaths on a national and indeed a global scale. Uh, well, that's it. Uh, Covid, the biggest crime against humanity since the Holocaust, which, of course, is a sort of hyperbole which is both offensive and wrong. But, uh, you know, I don't suppose... I, I, I think it's a great shame, the Lawrence Fox issue. Lawrence has slightly overplayed his hand and he's gone down a rabbit hole which is not ideal. I think there's room for a variety of political voices and I think we are edging closer to proportional representation and the option for those political voices to be represented properly in Parliament. But at the same time, the idea that uh, uh, little political parties, along with uh, smaller television channels, should be nestling only on the right of the political debate is a bit of a shame and should be should be encouraged to do so uh, is a bit of a shame. I think there should be a panoply of smaller political parties uh, across the political spectrum and um, a jockeying for the idea that we will eventually get proportional representation and um, move away from the vice of the two-party, first-past-the-post system. That would be the ideal, because what we need is a diversity of voices in Westminster to, to reflect the diverse and much more um, engaged political character of our country. The time has gone when we looked up to Parliament and nodded assent um, and let them get on with it. The time has gone for that. And we are engaged in political debate at a local level. Uh, we are engaged at questioning what is happening in Parliament at a local level in a way that I think has never been experienced in Britain before. And we have to thank social media, we have to thank... Uh, the um, the immediacy of political debate that social media has allowed. And I'm afraid newspapers are playing catch-up with this game. And so are the, the old standards of behaviour that you have to have impartiality, for example, that you shouldn't be biased. I'm biased. I am not impartial in any way. Um, the, uh, the, the, the idea that, um, th that I should be stuck in one particular view as well is something that I, I, I would defy. I change my mind. I don't mind. Um, and I think many other people change their mind. If, if, if I am in the business of trying to encourage people to think about uh, political ideas, then I'm in the business of encouraging people to change mind, and I lead by example, I hope. And sometimes, like Lawrence Fox, I go down a silly rabbit hole. Uh, and I think it's a shame that Lawrence doesn't have more people to guide and mentor him. And I, I, I certainly have a lot, of, a, a lot of affection for Lawrence and what he's doing, although I don't agree with many of the positions that he adopts. And I, I think that is another area where... Where, where, where I'm afraid social media and the immediacy of the uh, of, of the social media engagement uh, is um, is problematic because people some sometimes assume you've got to fit into a particular group you've got to be in a particular band you've got to be in a particular category uh, you mustn't change and uh, and, and I, I think this is wrong I think um, I think there's room for change, there's room for debate, and there's room for um, 
intelligent engagement, and I'm sorry that um, I'm I'm sorry about to reclaim. I um, I think it served a useful purpose, and I hope uh, I hope Lawrence can get his act together and find other things uh, to um, to talk about.